Now then, now yesterday there was a pretty big hot patch, we'll go over it in a second, but whilst I say it was big, it wasn't very exciting, and I guess for a lot of players, it just wasn't very nice. There was a lot of nerfs to legendary weapons, but the reason why I say it wasn't very exciting is because there wasn't many Vault Hunter changes in there either. So we'll go over that patch, but mostly going over the Couch Corp session with Eliza Melendez, who is the new media manager for Gearbox and also the voice of Tyrene. She does a show every Thursday night and she has guests on, which are Gearbox developers, where they talk about all of the changes and stuff and how long they've been at Gearbox and all that whilst playing the game. Grant Cow was on it last week. He was the combat designer we did a video going over all of the stuff there but also this time they were joined by Graham Timmins who is the lead level designer and in this episode they spoke about the changes and why they did what they did sort of gave some clues to what to expect in the future in regards to nerfs basically not as much as this week but also changes to stuff that we actually want iron bear buffs increased bank space and also designated loot drops were all things that they said they are working on and we should be able to see sometime soon we'll go over the new stuff that was said and then I want to talk about the patch and sort of give my two cents but like I said this patch was pretty grim with the nerfs that some guns got some fan favorites as well the Lyuda the Flacker the Hellbreaker to an extent not as much and of course the Hex Grenade all were nerfed all were made worse in this patch because they were maybe a bit too strong uh, in Gearbox's eyes but they did also mention in the future this isn't how they're going to balance the game from now on that this was a very you know difficult week I suppose for a lot of people but it's not going to be as bad as this today uh but... I do want to mention that like we digested a lot of data, and we made a big round of changes uh, this week, and, and some last week. Yeah. Uh, they will not be as drastic as this week. Yeah. Uh, they will not, probably not include many, many more like this uh, until we get more data. Right. Uh, this is a big adjustment. We'll have to wait a little bit to digest the, the new set of data. So uh, those that are worried that like they go farm oh. and then the next week what's they, next week yeah what's next week what's mm. next week mm -hmm. um, it won't be like that uh, I just wanted you know <laughs> I don't yeah. want to dissuade you guys from farming your favorite gear yeah. uh, it will it will be a little bit. Um, less iterative and, and more just kind of like, hey, we're for the next set of data. Like I said, they're looking at more buffs to Moe's and companions in general. They did have one in a hotfix recently, just increasing their health, which upset a lot of people because I suppose it would be like a half measure for some, myself included, where the Iron Bear and pets just need to do a bit more damage to be a bit more viable in general, especially for Moe's and her actual ability, where it feels like there's no point in using it. So they said that they are looking to increase other stuff with companions, specifically the Iron Bear, more stuff will be coming. You know. Yeah, th those got their health, uh, their base health increased uh, by a little bit because we wanted to provide a little bit of survivability. We know it's not the you know end all be all change. Um, and I can also talk about this a little some more too. Yeah. Um, the health change was just a natural increase in the base health because we wanted to for just in the main game. The whole game. Yeah, the whole game. Make sure that there you, you, you don't get chunked uh, immediately right when you uh, use your action skill. Right. Um, but on top of that, we are looking at other ways that can't be uh, addressed through a lever or a small number change. Mm. Um, we're looking at the effective health of, of all the, the companions, and we're looking at ways to address the amount of damage incoming um, in general. Right. So a, a number change won't help uh, the companions if they're getting, you know, attacked by 10 enemies in Mayhem 3, right? Like, no number change will address that. That's a lot of damage going out. But what we can do is look at other ways that we can, you know, through a, a larger fix, uh, just, just coming down the road, mm -hmm. say, like, these are things that we can do to make sure they take less damage um, or avoid that kind of damage or have players have more control over uh, uh, making sure that they take less damage. Mitigate it. Yeah. yeah. And in addition, we have you know things coming down the pipeline that I think players will be excited for too. Um, like I, I forgot to tease one thing when we were talking about companions. Uh, as a Moe's player myself. Oh, there were mad people talking about Iron Bear. Yeah, as a Moe's player myself, I would like to be an Iron Bear more often. And I don't have exact details to tell you yet, but I want to be an Iron Bear more often. And uh, for those that are like me, who want to be an Iron Bear more often, uh, things are coming. I did mention bank space increase. This is a thing that a lot of people want, myself included, because I don't really trust the banks anymore. After all, my stuff got cleared. But even then, there's like 200 legendaries in the game. There's 50 bank spaces across all your characters. So it's not a lot. This is what Gearbox had to say about it, though. In progress. Uh, officially, we're um, 
looking at investigating the best way to do it. Obviously, we got to care about stability. Uh, we have to care about making sure the, ba uh, the bank continues to be secure and a safe place to put your gear. Uh, we believe all the fixes we put in for that have been successful so far. Um, but we are in the process of looking at the expansion of the bank. Um, don't have a timeline, but it's officially going to happen. Uh, once we have more of that planned out, obviously we'll let the community know, but it is coming. I just can't put a timeline on it just yet. Perfect, good, because I'm a hoarder, and thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm definitely on the side of wanting Gearbox to take their time with this. Like I said, I lost all of my stuff in my bank because it was cleared because there was a lot of bugs and stuff wrong with it. So this is why it's taken a bit longer to uh, incorporate more bank space for people. Just because if they do it wrong, you could put all of your legendaries in there, 200 in like a vault space of 250. It could get cleared if it's not done properly. So that's kind of why they're taking their time with this, I feel. And also with all of the problems they have with performance with their menus, increasing bank space will just increase the strain that I suppose it would put on the menu UI so we're probably going to be getting performance changes soon then they can maybe start looking at increasing bank space that the menus aren't you know rubbish anymore that they keep freezing or lagging out or whatever so that's kind of why they did mention performance issues reiterated what they said last week basically saying it is a other team that you know do the patches and performance stuff separate to those to do hot fixes which are increasing numbers like they mentioned with companions it's very easy for them to increase the health of companions because it is just going in up in the number amount for other bits and pieces it requires bug testing maybe new animations on stuff i don't know but it takes a bit more time but they're still working on performance it's not a case of they have to choose between nerfing the gun or making the game perform better they choose nerfing the gun they're working on both it just takes a bit more time and i understand that from covering overwatch very similar thing this next Thing was really important for me personally. Dedicated loot drops is a thing that Borderlands 2 did a little bit, but certainly did it a lot more than Borderlands 3. The majority of legendary guns, artifacts, shield mods and stuff in the game are well drops that they can drop from anything. So I remember when I got the Auditing Crossroad gun for Amara when the game came out and people were like, oh my God, that gun is amazing. Where did you get it from? And I'm just like, you just gotta go out and do stuff. You can't farm for it specifically. You just gotta hope you get lucky. And I think that is a really bad way of going about trying to get gear. I think Anthem suffered from the same thing. It's like you need a way to focus on specific uh, player agency parts of the game by hunting specific guns. Destiny does a really good job of this by just having quests of, all right, you need to get the divinity weapon. You need to go do all of this, the ace of spades, yada, yada. But also you can get certain legendaries from certain areas in the game. That is what Borderlands is planning to do. This is what the devs had to say about it. Yeah. And speaking of like targeting a chase for, mm. for gear, uh, do we want to talk about can we segue into something we want a little tip that we want to give the, <gasps> viewer, the viewers today? Mm -hmm. With the adjustments with items and with the adjustments with all the stuff that we're making, we're also going to try to make the hunt for items a little bit more deterministic, meaning that the players will have a more consistent uh, hunt and chase to go for. Uh, in the near future, we are working on this. This is uh, yes. still TBD. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're planning it out, we're investigating it still. Uh, but, you know, we've seen the community feedback that, you know, we have so many items in the, the general pool available. And, you know, a lot of people are just wanting that. I can go to this place and I can reliably, with enough effort, mm -hmm. get a return on that effort and not you know, feel like you're just throwing darts hoping you get the item you're looking for from that person. So you know, we're in the, the beginning stages of kind of looking at the, the, the pools that are there and kind of shuffling them around so that everyone can more consistently find the piece of gear they're actually looking for and then obviously can you know, grind it out to find the role they're looking for too. Um, so we're, we're just starting that and you know, in the not too distant future, we'll have a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you know, it's just part of the effort to make sure that uh, we give players um, a wide variety of things to hunt for and uh, to encourage different types of gear combinations. Oh, and, oh yeah, we have to harvest um, these But we have a lot of oh, unique drops that are uh, so just dark. in a large general pool of items. Mm. And we wanted to make sure that they have a little bit more targeted hunt towards some items, especially if they want to hunt for very specific builds or very specific types of combinations. Yeah. So um, in, in regards to uh, the, uh, the boss enemies and whatnot, we, we're going to be looking into expanding 
the amount of drops that they can hold, the, the amount of unique drops. At the moment, every boss mm -hmm. at the moment, um, or every rare enemy has like one type of unique drop. And we're looking to expanding that so that um, players could have a, a larger variety of things that they can depend on when they go and target a, a very specific enemy to farm. And finally, Mayhem Mode is a pretty much a bust for me, really. Like, I only really play it on Mayhem 1 at the moment, like you're seeing in the gameplay, just because messing with the modifiers just isn't fun. You know, playing on Mayhem 3 and having to farm a good modifiers by going out of the game going in, I think isn't really fun at all, so I don't do it anymore. And the legendary drops, because of world drops, aren't too enticing, I don't think. But regardless, they are looking at Mayhem Mode, and there is a Mayhem event starting next week, I think as part of the 10-year anniversary, so this is how they plan to change some of the Mayhem modifiers with some coming in the future. Uh, next week we are kicking off the Mayhem anniversary event. <gasps> Yep. And uh, we are making sure Mayhem is a little bit more accessible for all players. Uh, we're, do we're doing a few big changes um, to the Mayhem anniversary event. Uh, stuff that I can talk about. Um, still work in progress, but some of the things I can talk about are we are increasing Reflect Chance to 100%. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're, re Brand, we're reducing. Not play with our emotions we're, today. We're reducing today. reflect chance dramatically. <laughs> we, not today. It, we are reducing it dramatically, <laughs> uh, somewhere to a very very low percentage, so that it is not going to be a drastically oh high number. Oh my god! You just you, you have no idea what you just did <laughs> to the Twitch and Mixer chat sure right now. Uh, uh, and no, we are reducing the reflect chance dramatically. Uh, we are also going to reduce the all weapon bullet damage penalty um, and all gun damage penalty, uh, all normal bullet damage and all gun damage penalties across the board. The goal of Mayhem is to encourage you to play different play styles, different builds, different um, uh, mix and match of gear. But we don't want to penalize you dramatically if you do want to stick with your build. Right. So the changes that come next week will encourage you to play different styles that Mayhem does, but not discourage you so that you have to go quit to main menu or re-roll your modifiers. Yeah. Um, it's going to be drastically reduced. And in addition, uh, for the hoarders, uh, all anointed loot chances will increase. So getting those anointed gear, um, all of those will increase uh, quite heavily. Um, so uh, make sure to, to go farm your favorite guns uh, the next um, week or, uh, or so, how long the uh, anniversary event lasts, and uh, you know, make sure to get your favorite anointed gear. Yep. All right. I feel that this video is already pretty long with some of the clips that we used, but somebody complained about this last week saying that, you know, it was a 20 minute video, but there was a lot of stuff to go over. I didn't want to paraphrase what the devs have said. I kind of wanted to get that information to you from the horse's mouth instead of, you know, butchering it by trying to make it short. But regardless, I didn't want this video to be too long. I'm currently at EGX, by the way, so if you are here, come say hello. We're doing some stuff with Omen. This isn't a hashtag ad, but I did want to mention it. But certainly looking at the changes from the hotfix, I didn't make a video on it yesterday because I didn't think it was worth really doing. It's nice to see Iron Bear and all pets and Digiclone get a bit more health, but really not that exciting. I think more needs to be done for certainly the pets and the Iron Bear, not so much with the Digiclone because I think Zane is in a much better spot than he was in. It's sad to see Hex and Firestorm, you know, damage reduced by 70%. I think that's a bit much. But it is nice to see some of the other weapons that have lacked a little bit, like the Maggie, uh, sort of get their way again, being able to be picked a lot. Some of the Tog weapons have been increased, the Legendary, so their damage is a bit better. And all of the Vladoffs have basically been buffed apart from the Lyuda. This patch isn't really as exciting and I can understand why people get, are getting frustrated with it when they are nerfing fan favourites but not really making other guns any more exciting. You know, stuff like the Wester gun I don't think people really necessarily care about. Now it might be a really good gun now in comparison but it's not enough. Like if you are to nerf guns you need to sort of buff the ball hunters I think. Really give people a sense of something new to sort of play with at the moment. Especially with how they're treating hotfixes as a weekly update, you know. Because it gives us stuff to talk about and to try I suppose. 
suppose. Like, it's good for me, otherwise I wouldn't have made a video this week because there hasn't really been a lot of news in Borderlands, but on that subject, I am slowing down a bit on content. I expected a bit of a lull like this after Borderlands is free's launch, but I mean, we do have the Halloween event coming in a couple of weeks. We have the takedown next month and a DLC probably before the end of this year. So, you know, it's a quiet time. Go and play Destiny, go and play other games if you're not enjoying Borderlands. There will be stuff worthwhile to come back to, which of course is all free apart from the DLC, of course. So I'm really excited to see what the Halloween event is, what the raid is, you know, the takedown, what that's going to be like. I just hope it's good. I hope that they've sort of learned stuff over six years on how to make content like this and update the game in a fashion. The 10 year anniversary of Borderlands 1, the event that's been going on in game for me has been really poor, I think. Uh, especially this week with the Iridium upgrade with nothing new to spend Iridium on. I think it's pretty pointless to be fair. So with any luck, the events are less like that and better in the future. But speaking to people at Gearbox and 2K, they are always listening. They have their nose on the stats of what players are doing and listening to feedback. So whilst it looks like they're doing the opposite of what people want them to do, they are listening and I'm sure they're going to do some really good patch changes in the future. I think there is such a thing as trying to do too much and cater to everybody, but I'm pretty confident that Gearbox can do more than most in this situation. I don't think we're necessarily going to have a Division 2 where it starts off really well and then just peters out and people are like, this game's awful now. I think Borderlands has a lot going for it. Really does depend on the DLCs and the updates that they have lined up. I don't really want to look at this anniversary event too much because it feels like it was just a, oh shit, we need to do something now. You know, we need to do some event to celebrate it. Just throw some ideas together like that. But let me know what you think. Are you excited for the changes in the future? Are you really annoyed at the patch that's just passed? Do let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all of the support. September and October for me have been a ridiculous month, but stuff's lining up for BlizzCon of what Central is kind of taking priority right now because I can definitely say there's some really cool things coming to the channel. Eyes emoji, I suppose it would be. Wink your face, I don't know. Thanks for watching, take care, see you soon.